And the play explodes, doesn't it? The play, <laughs> the play explodes mm -hmm. in a way that was quite shattering. Because in one way, it was what every actor dreams of, mm -hmm. right? You, you do your one-person show, and it's not just standing ovations and stuff. The, the media goes insane. Because yeah. we don't have stars in Canada, but we know the politicians. Mm -hmm. So if you're, I mean, I don't think I was as conscious of this. Thompson knew, but I don't think I was as conscious of this. Everyone knew Pierre Trudeau. Everyone knew of Margaret Trudeau. So you can't do a play about Marilyn Monroe and say it comes from here, but you can do a play in which the politicians are central. Mm -hmm. And so not only did the uh, uh, cultural media w want to write about it, mm -hmm. everyone, but the real media or the political media wrote about it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was like a, col I was a collective person. Mm -hmm. I was into the collective. And all of a sudden, I was on my own. I mean, the phone would start ringing at 8 o'clock after I'd done a show at 8 o'clock the night before. I didn't have an answering machine. Right. I didn't have anything. Right. And at first, I would be up doing, you know, global television, getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning and getting plastered with makeup, which I didn't wear, into some indescribable creature that they would make me into, mm -hmm. doing an interview, coming home, not being able to sleep, and then doing the show that night. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I didn't understand what had exploded. Mm -hmm. All I knew was I felt like I was being punished. <laughs> Why did you say punished? Because I was just working and working and working. Right. And... I was getting exhausted and I was starting to lose my voice and I was starting to because it never stopped. Right. And then after the show, when I just wanted to go and drink with my friends, all of a sudden I was a personage. I had to go and meet all the boards of directors and stuff and I didn't want to talk to those people and have them tell me their Trudeau stories. Right. You know, I met him once and I got this, oh God help us. I was a young person, I wanted to hang with my friends, you know. But all of a sudden I was a personage. Mm -hmm. And I was also being promoted in a way that confused me. Paul actually had an audition for who would publicize this show. And he uh, took Vivian Mewling. People had to give a, a proposal. Hmm. And Vivian Mewling, who was not one of the sort of alternative theater uh, people, said, I sell her as a star. Hmm. And he took him, her. Right. Now, what that meant to me, I didn't know. Because if you're from a left-leaning collective theater tradition, it's not about individual achievement. It's not mm -hmm. about I'm a star and you're not. Mm -hmm. I am you know, heading for the top and you, you know, who cares who I step on? You know, It's not that. And so all of a sudden, I was supposed to be a star. It didn't mean anything to me. I really mm. was coming from an alternate place. I found that stuff disgusting. I didn't like it. It created a, again, it was of the status quo, and I was against the status quo. But all mm. of a sudden, I was a star. Mm. And even what they did to me, at that time, they didn't seem to understand light makeup. When you went into, if I had my hair cut, you know, and I had long straight hair, they cut my hair and permed it. I walked out the door and I was a different person. I walked out of Sassoon's and someone went, she looks like Margaret Trudeau. Right. I went to these many, many, many interview shows and everything and they would, they didn't know how to do young people. So I would look unrecognizable and it was freaky to me. Mm -hmm. It was very freaky. I didn't understand. And I didn't understand when you know, uh, I was on the, there was an article about me in the back page of McLean's, which was, um, oh, I f again, forget his name, but he was a, a political reporter and a full page uh, theater review. Mm -hmm. They don't even do theater reviews in McLean's anymore. Yeah, right? right? So mm -hmm. I was everywhere. It was people actually, there was a fisticuffs trying to get a ticket. Mm -hmm. And immediately all the other theaters went on, you know, lined up. Mm -hmm. There were so many interviews 
and and finally I'm going I can't do it I can't get up and go to sleep and do the show this is like everybody for whom there is an explosion of this kind of attention mm -hmm. will say the same thing yeah. whether it's on the American model with a sort of you know huge thing or whether it's what Canada had to offer no one no one ever got that much press mm -hmm. in Canada because it was the double because the political journalists would show up and write about it too yeah. mm -hmm. so when we got to a place what Paul devised so they wouldn't kill me was a press conference uh, so I would go in as Trudeau mm -hmm. maybe do a little bit of the play I don't remember and then answer questions as Trudeau and mm -hmm. then picked people would have interviews with me mm -hmm. and um, they had to protect me and then of course everyone that I ever knew wanted to talk to me and I was doing a two-act one person show mm -hmm. with 17 quick changes because right. I changed completely into a total suit to total mm -hmm. ball dress to total all these things at the beginning of the show and then later had a more neutral show as the scenes went quicker mm -hmm. so it was like and then I'm by myself in Calgary I was by myself in Vancouver for two months right and the show was exhausting mm -hmm. and it was like you I, ran for how long did you run two for? months that's crazy. They don't even do that anymore. Wow. No, no. I ran for two months in, at, at the cultural center and could have run longer. Right. But I was wanted to shoot myself. I was just. I right. didn't understand what it would mean to be on tour by myself. It would these long dates. They were. I was in regional theaters, so the runs were four weeks. Yeah. And you know, Paul and everyone did as much as they could to protect me. But it was, it was really unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And then I would come back to Toronto with my friends. You know, my friends were doing bicycle couriering to make some money, yeah. and I had money, mm -hmm. and I had this enormous success, mm -hmm. and I was isolated by that, mm -hmm. and I didn't know how to behave, and I was hanging out with older people. I had to have lunch with the board of or dinner with a lord of board of directors, and I, I didn't know how to dress. It was like I wasn't a young person. It was very hard. Let me just find this. It's very hard. What it was, was it was against what I believed. I all of a sudden was turning into something that was against what I believed. Mm -hmm. And I was, for someone who was a left-leaning person, getting attention and money and success that separated me from my fellows. Mm -hmm. And you could say that that meant I didn't want success because that does separate you from people. Or you could say that there was something fundamentally against how I wanted to live my life mm -hmm. that transpired around this time. Mm -hmm. A separation. And, and I, and it, it, you know, of, of course, I had to be enjoying it. I was enjoying it. My parents were enjoying it. Yeah. You know, Thompson was uh, over the moon. He was mm -hmm. finally doing what he wanted. And he had a play that could play to the Toffs and to the Groundlings, right. which is a basic Elizabethan model, mm -hmm. that you can play those things and mm -hmm. everybody would get it. Mm -hmm. So it was enormous. And yet I had to keep doing the play. Mm -hmm. So I did it for at least two years and the publicity followed and all of that stuff. And then we got back to Toronto mm -hmm. to play it here in a 200 seat theater and it was insane. Right, mm -hmm. like the, the build-up of that whole cross Canada tour, mm -hmm. and finally, uh, Paul and Shane Jaffe, because it was thinking like, you know, I wasn't going to hold up to do another like zillion months run. Mm -hmm. They said, okay, let's rent the Alex, and so we went to the Royal Alex, mm -hmm. not as part of their uh, season. They didn't do that then, mm -hmm. but we rented the Royal Alex for five nights, and packed it. Right. And someone told me, and I didn't know her then, that I was the first woman to play that stage on my own since Ruth Draper, wow. who was the famous whatever from the 30s and 40s. So it was like, wow. and that was fabulous. And I knew it was the end. Right. And then we went to New York. Mm 